another in my series, Micro Tips. And today it's all about fruit, specifically about apples. And I want to show you several ways of how to cook an apple and how to do something really exciting, which is to make an apple dessert in less than 10 minutes. So off we go. This is what we're going to be doing. The apples I'm using are something rather special to English. They're English Bramley apples. And the reason that these is better than Cox's or Braeburn's is because they do something spectacular when they're cooked. What happens is that they collapse completely and they turn into something that we know as stewed apple. And this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Normally, this can be done slowly on the hob or in the oven, but the indicative word here is slowly. And in this little series, we don't do anything slowly. So I'm going to show you what to do. And first of all, I want to show you that I've got some rather appropriate plates for this session, which is a French set of plates. And there are actually six of them, and they range from all the different parts of eating an apple. So we're just going to take one of those plates. And actually, I really only need a plain white plate. But I'm going to show you how to turn an apple like this into a baked apple. Now, I've already done one. And this lovely little container, you don't need to have any special containers or plates, but this one has apples on it and it has a sort of center little spike coming up the middle. And this was given to me by one of my lovely American daughters-in-law. So what you do is, I'll show you, I'm going to show you what the big apple looks like. There it is. Here it is. Now, this apple started off like that. And how do we get it there? Well, first of all, you take an apple corer and you go down the middle, press it down, and out comes the little center in the core of the apple. But I'm going to assume that you don't have one of those. So instead, what you want to do is to go around with a knife and to cut both ends until you have got the middle out. Then what you do is you put down the center of the apple, you put some sugar. Now I'm using a specifically nice one, and this is Muscovado sugar, which has a lovely sort of toffee type of taste, and it is not just sugar, it just tastes really brilliant. And so this dark brown sugar goes when you put your apple in the center of a small pot like this, you fill the middle part, the cavity, with this dark brown sugar, and there it is. And so you put as much as you like. I mean, I don't like a huge amount of sugar, but for you, I would certainly stuff the middle with sugar and maybe dot a little bit around the sides. And then you add just about a tablespoon of water. I've spoken before, or perhaps you might not have heard me mention it, that the less liquid you have, the better and the quicker it cooks. So what's happened to this apple is that I'm going to lift up a little bit of the middle and you can see it's beautifully soft. The skin is not crisp, but it doesn't really need to be crisp. I'm going to just wipe that little bit away over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what remains of the lovely dark brown sugar top and I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to spoon it out onto the top. There it is. Now, great with custard or with cream or just on its own. So there we have a couple of minutes. I'll tell you how long it took. I think I put it in and it was less than two and a half minutes for one apple of this size. Always go for the shorter time. And if you're not sure, try it out at about maybe less than two minutes, one minute 30. And if it isn't done then, add on a little bit of time. But there is your baked apple. Now, the next thing that I'm going to make is I am going to show you what to do with stewed apple, how to get this stewed apple like this. Now, for this, we need a microwave container. Now, containers in the microwave can be plastic, glass, paper, doesn't really matter what you can use, all you really need to know is what you can't use, and you cannot use metal. 
So no saucepans, no knives, no spoons, nothing that is metal should go into the microwave. So here I have my nice little um, plastic one, which has a lid. And I'm going to take one of the large apples and I'm just going to cut it into, into quarters. I've got a board down here and it's not tremendously interesting, but I will show you briefly just what shape and size you want the apples to be. So <clears throat> you just quarter the apples and then take the peel off. It's going quite easily. If you find any brown bits, obviously like that, just cut them out and throw them away. And then cut the apples into small chunks, not real little dice. You don't need to be precise with this at all. And when you've got the whole bowl of things filled up, you'll be ready to put it in the microwave again for just about a couple of minutes. And gradually the apples will break down and what you have is a wonderful smooth mixture. No need to puree it, no need to do anything except maybe the tiniest bit of mashing. And that is the basis for the dessert we're going to make in a minute. Now, I'm not going to peel the rest of it because it's boring watching somebody doing that. But basically, this is what you need to do. You need to sprinkle over it a little bit of white sugar, not the brown sugar this time. So take just a couple of teaspoons. For this amount, I'm just putting like one, but if you would do more apples, which I would, um, I would put a little bit more. Cover it up like that, pop it in the microwave, and two minutes later, there you have your lovely stewed apple mixture. Now, I'm going to tell you about another fruit, and this other fruit is part of the dessert that we are going to make, and that is raspberries. Now, a little note about cooking fruit in the microwave. For some reason, whenever you cook fruit in a microwave, it loses its sweetness. So imagine you have plums that are maybe quite ripe, but not completely ripe, but they do have a little bit of sweetness. You cut them up and you cook them, whether it's on the hob or whether it's in the oven, however you do it, they will lose their sweetness and need quite a little bit of sugar added to them. And this is the same with berries, it's the same with everything. Now I've got a little pile of raspberries here, and this one is really quite sweet. But I want to tell you that as soon as you start cooking it, it will go much more sour. So, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be making something called a coolie, which is a little sauce made from fresh berries. Now I originally, wanted to use red currants because red currants are extremely pretty. They're little tiny currants on little sprays, sprigs, and they are very tart, but when you add sugar to them, they make the most fantastic red sauce. And it's also something that is used in red currant jelly. Well, I didn't get red currants because they're not easy to obtain and I don't want to use ingredients that are gonna make you chase around from shop to shop asking if they've got it. So most supermarkets have raspberries. What I've actually done is I've just washed half the punnet of raspberries and the other half I put into a flattish dish, sprinkled over some sugar and then cooked it for less than a minute. Now what you can see here is that the raspberries have broken down and so there's now quite a mush there. And also what you can see is it's made its own juice, no water. Remember, I hardly ever add water when I'm cooking things here, and that is what you do. Now, that mush means is not exactly a sauce. So this is what we want to do. <clears throat> we want to pour the mush into a sieve strainer, like that, and then just press it carefully through and you can see the water, the juice pouring out of it. And you just keep on and on smashing and pressing until you've got nothing left except the seeds of the raspberries, because we don't particularly want a mouthful of seeds. 
And this is a wonderful way of just getting to the pure source. So, nearly done. I am continuing to press it all out because I want you to realise that it's really important not to leave any of it behind because all that can go into making the lovely sauce. Even what's on the bottom here, just scrape the bottom off the sip. Now, there we have it. We have our very nice raspberry kui. Okay, now I'm going to get this out of the way and I'm going to get something out of my fridge which I've been leaving there. This is something that I'm going to use to top the dessert we're going to make. Now the dessert doesn't have a name. Why doesn't it have a name? It doesn't have a name because I've never made it before. I don't know if you know anybody who's done a video of something they've never done before, but this is what I'm going to do now. I thought this up last night, in the middle of the night, and I thought today I'm going to try this. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm moving the raspberries out of the way for the moment, all things here, and I'm going to get some sponge fingers. Now, I, these are the kind of things that are used in English trifle, or they are used in tiramisu, and all they need is to be, excuse the squeaky noise, they need to be soaked in some sherry. Now, this I'm just pouring a little bit of dry sherry over these sponge finger biscuits. Sponge fingers are extremely sweet because they've got a lovely crispy sugary layer on the top. Now what's happened is that almost immediately that sherry has got absorbed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready the plate that I'm doing it on and I'm going to put one, two, three sponge fingers there with a little bit of the sherry and then I'm going to pile onto it the stewed apple that I had already made before. Now this dessert is either for one extremely hungry person or for two medium hungry people. And obviously it goes without saying that if you want to make it for more people, you double up on the quantities. More sponge fingers, more apple, more everything. But I do believe that so many people are not entertaining at the moment and they are very unlikely to be having four or six people sitting at their table unless they've got a big family. So what I'm doing here is creating something for one or two people. I have to tell you that when I'm doing these videos, I often don't have time to make lunch. So I feel that it's really nice if I can turn out some nice dessert or something to have later on. So here we go. We have the stewed apple on top of the layer of biscuits and then I'm going to put the next layer on one, two, three. Now comes the topping and the topping is some whipped cream and you see this is what I have in my fridge. Now these came actually out of the freezer because I don't have any fresh cream in my fridge so what I did was I made these some while ago and I then at that moment wasn't sure what I was going to use them for but I whipped up some cream, piped it out into little pieces and here we go, we have it ready just to decorate the apple dessert. Now it's a little bit messy this so I'm going to move that out of the way. Whoops. Or we just finish it off. If you want to, you could just whip cream, if you have a pot of whipped cream, whipping cream, whip it up and just spread it over the top. Uh, you don't have to pipe it like this, but if you happen to, then that's okay. Now we're back with the raspberries and the coolie. So here we are. It is quite liquid, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drizzle it all over the top of this dessert. You can put as much or as little as you like. I'm putting a little bit on the sides 
and you can actually turn the cream almost red if you want to. But there it is. And I can tell you that that is so nice. It doesn't have a jam flavour, it just has a fresh raspberry flavour. And to finish it off, I'm going to put some raspberries in the spaces that we have here. All of them filling it in. So there we go. So you can see the raspberries and you can see the cream and the layered dessert. So I really hope that you're going to have a go at this because it is fun and it's quick and I really think that people will enjoy it. If you've enjoyed watching this, do share it with somebody else and you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll hear about more things that I'm doing. Thank you so much for watching.